I'm Tom Rowland. And I'm Rich Tudor of Saltwater Experience. Go to TackleDirect.tv to enter to win a chance to go fishing at the beautiful Hawks Cay Resort in the Florida Keys with Saltwater Experience. And if you're not lucky enough to win the grand prize, there's other prize packages from some of our major sponsors, Lowrance, Hook, St. Croix, Daiwa, Yeti, and many more giving away great prize packages, so check it out. You're not going to want to miss this. Go to TackleDirect.tv because that's the only way you can enter. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to How To Tuesday Today. Today, we're going to talk about a question that, that I got on our text. You can always ask me questions on the text thread. It is 305-930-7346. If you have questions of your own, you can text that number and uh, you'll, you'll get me. That's the text for the podcast. I will answer. This is the place where I do uh, a lot of guide recommendations and other things, and also answer questions like this, which turn out to be outstanding uh, subject matter for the podcast. And the question was about getting to know your angler, getting to know the angler's um, capabilities, and then planning your day out. Now, if you're a guide that has um, a clientele where you're fishing with someone for a week at a time, um, that is a luxury, right? That's that's the way that the end of my guide career was, where um, I had three or four clients, and they were all fishing, you know, sixty to a hundred days each, and um, you know, you get to know those kind of guys pretty well. There's no problem with somebody that you fish with all the time, but when you're first starting to guide a lot of times you are fishing with a different person every single day. And in a lot of cases, sometimes a different person in the morning than you're fishing with in the afternoon. You're doing a double half day. So you, as a fishing guide, have to become very, very good at assessing someone's skill level very quickly. And the reason that you need to assess the skill level, obviously, is, you know, in the Florida Keys, we're very fortunate to have a lot of different types of fish, a lot of different types of fishing situations, a lot of different types of methods that we can use. Some will get someone to catch a fish a lot easier than others. Let's say, for example, you could go and and cast uh, a live pilchard um, to a coral head and catch snappers or, or, you know, ca cast a live pilchard, um, or let a, let a live mullet be at the bridge and be behind the, the boat at the bridge. There's very little casting. The mullet's doing all the work. You have put your angler in a situation to where he doesn't really need to be able to cast very well. Um, you know, the fish is going to come to the bait as opposed to fly fishing for permit or fly fishing for bonefish or fly fishing for redfish where you're sight fishing and, and you have to be very, very precise and or spin fishing for, for these same fish in these same situations. So when you meet someone at the dock, uh, there is, you, you become very skilled at very quickly being able to assess um, an angler's kind of skill level, their experience level. And the trick to this really is to do it in a way that it's not like a tryout. It's you're doing it in a way that you're not insulting your client that you're about to spend the next four to eight hours on the boat with, but you have to figure out what's going on. And the reason why you have to figure it out pretty quickly is let's just say that you can go sight fishing for redfish up in the Everglades where they're going to be tailing and you've got to be actually really pretty good to catch one of those fish or and if you are good, you can catch a lot of them. But if you're not good, you're going to struggle badly. Or you could go over to this other place, which is in a different direction, and you can um, blind cast for barracudas, or you could blind cast for redfish, or you could blind cast for something. You don't necessarily have to be as good. You have the opportunity to do it. If you go all the way to the challenging spot and you realize that the angler is not experienced enough for this situation. You've burned up all the time. You're not going to be able to get over to the other situation. Both people are going to be a little bit frustrated and it's not going to result in the very best day, which goes back to the point of communication being so key to having a, a successful day as a fishing guide, as a hunting guide, as a any kind of guide. If you can talk to your anglers and get kind of some information from them, you'll go a long, a long way further. So what, what one way you can do it is kind of 
at a close by spot that's not any kind of big big uh, run one way or another. You can kind of stop the boat and and be like, okay, well let's make a, let's make a few casts in here. There might be some Jack Cravels. There might be something in here where uh, this is kind of just a just a stopping spot in the morning. We like to stop here for a minute and just make a few casts. So whether it's with a fly rod or a spinning rod, you can get a rod in their hand very, very quickly, which is always a good thing instead of just taking a long, long run and 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 just waiting for the action. Uh, but if you don't know the angler and you can get them to make some casts, you can see, do they hold the spinning rod upside down? Uh, are they holding the right end of the fly rod? I don't know. Any kind of little uh, things that can be indicators of whether or not somebody has done this before can, you know... Uh, can they can they cast powerfully? Are they going to be able to get it into the wind, both with a spinning rod and a fly rod? Like which you know which rod do they want to use, and can they handle that in a way that will allow for the type of fishing that you're you're going for? And you know this information, like when you see somebody pick up a, a spinning rod and they're you know they're 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 really struggling with it, then you're thinking, okay, uh, I need to figure out like. Is this guy more comfortable fly fishing? Is he um, somebody that is it is just inexperienced with a spinning rod? Have they done this before? Is this uh, you know a really good angler, or is it a beginner, or worse, is it somebody that thinks they're a really good angler that really isn't? That's that's kind of the worst case scenario. So just this little bit of of information that they're showing you is an outstanding way to kind of gather this. And then you can kind of talk about it like, oh man, I see you're a really good caster. Would you rather kind of go up into, you know, a place where we're going to see tailing bonefish or tailing uh, redfish and get this kind of sight fishing? You know, we got, we got a lot of things that are going on. Would you like to do this sight fishing or would you like to um, maybe, maybe go over here and, and try something else or tarpon fishing or whatever. And then they start talking to you and hopefully, a lot of these conversations have happened before anybody even gets on the boat. But even so, a lot of times people will tell you that they have a lot more experience than they actually do, or maybe they do have a lot of experience, but it hasn't quite translated into actual skills with the rod. And now I'm kind of dancing around the idea that maybe this person's not very good. Well, you know what? You, you, as we've talked about many times on this podcast, as a fishing guide, you're an entertainer as much as you are somebody that's out there trying to get someone a fish. So you don't want to insult this person. You don't want them to feel bad at the very beginning of their trip, but you do need to be realistic about what is going to happen. If they can't cast more than 20 feet and you're trying to, and, and, and it's crucial that somebody casts 80 or a hundred feet to even get anywhere close to a, a school of redfish on a, on a, on a slick calm day, then that's not the right situation. Pick a different situation, find another situation, find another species, find another uh, way to catch them because that isn't going to be very productive. Um, And that is if you can. Sometimes that's the only thing happening and that's what you got to do. So now you got to put on your instructor hat and you got to take a few minutes and say, okay, well, if we're going up here, we're going to need to uh, get you to be able to cast a little more powerfully. Now I see that you've used a spinning rod before, but I noticed that you're only using it with one hand. Let me show you this uh, way that we hold, you know, the the spinning rod with both hands, and we push and pull when we make the when we make the cast. Or let me show you the double haul in the fly in in fly fishing. Or let me show you how to shoot some more line. Or let let's use this heavier rod, which may be a little bit easier to throw a little bit longer line. Whatever, taking that 15 to 30 minutes to out of the day to not only get to know your angler, but also to teach them the skills that they need so that they can be successful will go a long, long way um, to having them be actually successful and having them be a happy client that will come back. Now, if you're fishing with them over the course of a week, um, you know, on the first day, you're going to learn some things about your angler and they're going to learn some things about you and you're going to kind of start shaping the rest of the week by the things that you're learning. Maybe on the first day, the guy can't double haul at all, but by the end of the first day, he's starting to get it. About midday on the second day, he's throwing 30, 40 feet further than he was on the first day. By the third day, he's ready to roll. He can do it. Um, And so there, you know, you kind of stair step up to the, the situations that, you know, require 
the skills. And so getting to know your angler for a fishing guide or a hunting guide, getting to know your, your hunter, uh, very, very important. Very, very important to be able to determine where and how you're going to fish for the rest of the day or the rest of the week. I strongly encourage uh, the young fishing guides out there, like the gentleman that asked me these questions about how to get to know your angler. It really starts if you are, if you are fortunate enough to have someone uh, book you in advance. It really starts on the telephone or you know, through the email. Uh, or however they they reach out to you, if you can get them to talk to you on the telephone and you can have these conversations of what are what are your expectations? You know, have you done this before? Um, you know, how often do you fish in the Florida Keys? How often do you fish in salt water? I don't know. Um, you know, and then maybe you know what's your favorite kind of rod? And you can start to you know somebody's like, well. I got a, a rod that my grandfather gave me, and it's the only one. You know, it's it's made out of fiberglass and then you kind of get the idea, okay, well, this guy's got, you know, he's not on the cutting edge where you got this other guy and he's like, he's spitting out all this stuff. I got the latest and greatest of all this stuff. You know, he is into it. You know, he, he at least has the right gear. Does he know how to use it? That is something that maybe you have to get him on the boat and find out. And sometimes you're very pleasantly surprised. You're like, I got a hot angler. I'm telling, I'm going to the best spots right now. This is awesome. And for the anglers out there, you know, if you don't have the skill skills, don't expect the guide to take you to the very, very, very best spots. And it's not that it's that it's they don't want to take you there because you're not deserving. They don't want to take they don't want you to go there because it's going to be a frustrating situation for both parties. Like if you're not good enough to handle these ultra, ultra spooky fish and there are other fish available, a good guide is going to take you to these other fish. Now, a great angler craves those situations for the ultra spooky fish. That's what they want. And that kind of information can be communicated in advance of the trip. Like, what's your ultimate uh, fishing situation? Man, I love a tailing fish. I would rather catch one tailing fish than 20 blind Okay, now you know something about that. Oh, where where have you done that? Oh, I've gone all over the place. My favorite place to go is the Florida Keys. I fish with, you know, this particular guide that you probably know his name. And, you know, we go and do all these things. And, you know, I've never fished in your area and I want to come down there. Boy, you just learned a ton. You learned a ton. Now, maybe this guy exaggerates his ability a little bit. Maybe he doesn't. You're going to find out when you get on the boat. But for the guy that just books the trip, right on the dock, man, you've got to become very good, very quick, uh, to, to assess skill levels and also kind of cut right to it and find out what people want to do. What would their ultimate fish be? How do you, how do you work this puzzle out? And that's really what it is. It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. You're trying to, you're trying to please your angler and you're also trying to understand where their skill level is and how you can please that angler and also challenge that angler, but not too much. You know what I'm saying? It's a tricky thing. That's why guiding is an art form. And great fishing guides are are truly uh, great communicators. And great fishing guides are truly creative thinkers that can always be thinking, okay, well, if that's as far as we can cast, then we need to go over here. Okay. Uh, or if that's as far as we can cast, then we need all downwind shots and the wind's blowing like this. That means I'm going to have to approach all these flats like this. And the, it, it starts turning. That's where the wheels start turning in your head. And that's when, you know, you can do things that seem impossible. Like, how are you going to catch a permit with a guy that can only throw 25 feet of fly line? Trust me, it happens. It happens a lot. And there are a lot of great fishing guides out there that can make it happen because they start using their knowledge of the tides and the wind and the fish and and the depth of the water and getting these this angler into this perfect situation to where you can use the boat as much as you can use the fishing rod to actually present the fly to a fish and if that fish gets a fly put in front of it kind of the right way it's probably going to eat and the guide knows if you know under these conditions I can probably pull right up to a fish 
uh, cause it's windy and they're not hearing me very much, very well. Trust me, there are fantastic fishing guides out there that do it all the time and, and it can be done, but a lot of times it has to, it, you know, it requires patience, it requires communication and it requires communication between both the angler and the guide. So that's the how to Tuesday for today. If you're going to have a great trip, you know, the way to do it, it starts with communication, whether you're the angler or whether you're the guide and it, it, uh, you know, on both sides of this, it, if you want a certain thing as an angler, you need to communicate that to the, to the guide. If you only want tailing fish, you need to tell him for sure, I don't want to go to the mud and, and blind cast for bonefish. I want to fish for tailing bonefish. Okay. And they probably know where they are, but most people, you know, maybe, maybe most, most of that particular guide's anglers aren't capable of doing it. So they, you know, just go to the mud or, or maybe they don't understand uh, that you would rather catch two tailors than 30 blind casting in a bonefish mud. This stuff all needs to come out. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting there blind casting into a, into a bonefish mud. So you got to communicate with the guide. Maybe, maybe uh, sometimes you go to some of these locations and there's a language barrier. That's when you communicate with the lodge owner. That's when you communicate with the trip host. That's when you communicate with somebody that you can, you know, you understand one another so that there's not a language barrier and they take you exactly to the type of fishing situation that you want and exactly the type of fish fishing situation that you are capable of handling. And it goes for the guide as well. Communication is key. All right. That's how to Tuesday for today. I hope you guys communicate with your fishing guides. I hope you communicate with me. You can text me 305-930-7346 and if you're into mindset at all, uh, things, motivational things, mindset things, I am way into it. I love it. I read about it all the time, and I've decided to start sharing it with you guys. A lot of you have already joined, but if you text mindset to 305-930-7346, you will get a little piece of mindset, 400 characters or less, written by me every Monday at 9, 10 a.m., just when you need it, right when the workday starts on Monday. Boom. There you go. A little bit of mindset. A little bit of mindset advice uh, that usually doesn't come from me. It's usually like a quote or something and then how I interpret that quote and apply it to my life and how maybe maybe I want to apply it to my life. I'm just like you, man. I'm just trying to learn as we go here. All right. That's How to Tuesday for today. I'll see you guys next week. Good luck. See you. See you.